Well, good morning, good afternoon. Good evening. It's been a while since I've spoken to you guys. Good to have you back. Um, so we're going to follow on from the uh, DSLR Intermediate course um, and look at a few behind the scene ways of how uh, this is structured, um, how you can use XML files to, I think, make it easier to set these sorts of things up and how we can do it in a way that makes it easily um, transportable between multiple um, photo booths. Now, obviously this doesn't apply just to this specific demo, but this applies to uh, any any sort of setup for Breeze um, at all. Um, so I think we'll probably have a few less people on this one because I imagine most people find uh, XML and data um, pretty boring. Um, but for those that are watching, um, thanks for tuning in and ask questions and I'll try and try and um, try and answer them as we go so I'm gonna um, just jump over here for one sec which might be just a little bit sized incorrectly but uh, what I wanted to just show as a, as a proof that um, I was demoing um, this interface in the previous class on this PC over here um, and I've logged into another PC, um, and basically, just to, to prove it, if I come into my folder here, uh, custom, because I've set things up in, a, I guess, a fairly logical, structured way um, that syncs across all our photo booths, I can come to any photo booth that we have, and I can open up um, Breeze, and run the exact same um, event or interface on any photo booth that I have um, around the country or the world for that matter. So we can see this one over here is sitting in uh, one of my warehouses and this is the one that's just sitting near me. So I didn't have to do anything extra to make that work. I can literally open any one of the you know, 20 or 30 photo booths that we have um, and I can open up this event and it will run exactly the same on every single photo booth and I haven't moved files to any booth manually, it's all been done um, automatically. So how do we get there? Um, I'm going to close out of one booth because we don't need to see all of that. Close. You know what, I will just do it a different way. Okay. So, um, where shall we start with this? Let me just exit out of here. All right. I want to show you one little trick um, that you may or may not know of as a good starting point. Uh, I'll come back to here. Okay, any settings file in Breeze um, can be made a, um, I guess an executable, a clickable file that will launch Breeze with your settings um, simply by um, having Windows change the default program to Breeze to be the one that opens XML files. So if you right click on any um, Breeze XML file um, and if you say open with, um, when the first time you do this you won't see Breeze here as an option. Um, but if you come down and say choose another app um, and then say uh, there's more apps, look for another app on this PC and then if you come into your C drive, program files, x86, Breeze, DSLR Remote Pro and select DSLR Remote Pro, basically you can now make any Breeze settings file uh, double clickable and when you double click on it it will open breeze um, with your settings loaded now the only caveat to that is uh, if you happen to use xml files regularly in your day-to-day -day life um, it'll make all xml files on your computer open in breeze by default if you just double click it of course you can right click it and open it with any program you want um, and if you also use um, hot folder prints or breeze kiosk um, 
it will obviously uh, override that and it will open um, uh, open those shortcuts in DSLR Remote Pro. However, there is another way to do it. Uh, if we just make a copy of um, this file for one sec. If we edit the properties of, of this file and come to, uh, actually, you know what? No, let me do it that way. Let me try this one real quick. Uh, it's because, hmm. This is what I get for, for making up um, my demo on the fly for this one. You know, I won't deviate. Just this is a good starting point. You can do it that way. There's another way you can do it by setting a t uh, changing the target in the in the property shortcut. But this is actually quite quite an effective way of doing it. So you can change yeah any any breeze settings file you can have open in DSLR Remote Pro, and I won't sidetrack myself for things I wasn't wasn't going to show. Um, so that just makes it easier, and I find that's excellent for staff. So what we do. Um, if I can just show you, um, I'm just going to clean up my desktop just a little bit. So we have on our photo booth, this is basically how it looks like. Um, every photo booth looks the same, just a black background. Uh, and we have run a little Windows app called BG Info, which updates the desktop um, screen with the name of the photo booth, the CPU, free hard drive space, uh, memory, what OS it's running. Um, so when I log into a photo booth, um, yes, yes, you are. I need to sh create a shortcut to change the target. Yep, yes, that's what I was missing. <laughs> Thank you. Um, the, I, I don't do it that way anymore. Um, so I just forgotten. But yes, thank you. I feel like an idiot. Um, so we set each booth up with uh, BG Info, which basically updates um, each program, uh, each photo booth with information, which I find particularly handy just for, uh, at a glance, hard drive space, um, and also um, just for knowing what name, uh, what booth I'm working on. But on the desktop, we place a folder of shortcuts um, to all the programs that we use. So um, all our Breeze stuff, Breeze Hub, um, Hashtag Monitor, uh, hot folder prints to our manual um, and so forth. Then we create a custom uh, a folder for event shortcuts. So basically in here are all the upcoming events that we have um, and I can click on uh, one of these to load that uh, particular uh, event. Yep. Um, so if I have a look in here, that is set up in a way so it even um, will it changes where the images are saved and, and a whole bunch of stuff which we'll, we'll look at. Um, so what we do then, if we wanted to create a shortcut um, for this demo, the Corona demo, then um, yes, I would basically create a, a, a shortcut. Oops, I did the wrong shortcut. Yeah. Let's try that again. That's the one. Okay. Um, I'll just cut that file. I put it into this folder and I'd rename it to Corona Demo. Um, and yes, now I remember. Thank you. Um, in here, now that it's a shortcut, we can also change the target. So if you right click and go properties on the shortcut, um, it's got the path to where the shortcut. Um, itself is to the XML file but then after that basically what we can do is paste in 
um, what program, or before that, post, paste in what program is going to open it. So if we quickly come into um, uh, DSLR Remote Pro, um, we can grab um, grab the path to that. And if we put a start here in commas. So basically now what's saying is use DSLR Remote Pro um, to open this file. So if you did, if you were switching, doing a lot of work between hot folder prints and DSLR Remote Pro, you could, for example, change um, this to the, the shortcut for um, hot folder prints, and then it would open the settings file with hot, hot folder prints. So I'll just come back to my shortcuts. So now in this folder, I have essentially what are my upcoming events. So if I double click on this Corona demo shortcut, ignore that warning, it's gonna load me into this. And if we exit out, and again, just to show, if I click on this one, it's now loaded um, a different interface. And if I click on this one, it'll be different again. So this is how we sort of set things up for our staff. So basically, really, all our staff ever do is double click on, on they see what jobs they've got coming up, um, and they double click on it, and, and that's it. So it's nice and easy. So how do we sort of structure things, um, I guess, to sync across multiple photo booths? So my biggest tip really is to try and um, you need to standardize where things are saved. So we save everything into our C drive. Um, so we save all our images into C drive. All my profiles and settings are in our C drive. And the reason I do that is because every, every computer, every photo booth has a C drive. So I know that the path names are going to be the same on every photo booth. Where you run into issues with Breeze is if you start saving things on your desktop or in um, e even your documents folder because basically uh, on, on your computer, it, your documents folder is essentially, you know, um, oops, comes under your user folder. So a lot of us, when we first set up our photo booths, we've given our photo booth a particular username. Um, we probably didn't think about giving all our photo booths the same username. So you might have it photo booth one, photo booth two, photo booth three. And so when you start saving things into your documents folder, if you were to sync those files across to all your photo booths, the path to the documents folder is different on each booth. Now Breeze does have a, a documents token that you can use, but I think it's just a lot neater and cleaner to save everything into your C drive. So if you're using Dropbox, Normally Dropbox tends to default to saving into your documents folder. So what I would suggest is um, having your Dropbox folder actually move it and have it save into your C drive um, like that. Now we don't actually use Dropbox. We use um, a Synology drive, which is like a, a DIY Dropbox, I suppose. Um, and one of the big benefits of that and another good option to look at is um, Resilio Sync is that Resilio Sync and Synology allow you to say, have shared folders or synced folders outside of the parent folder. With Dropbox, basically, all your shares have to be within, under the Dropbox folder. Um, and I sort of find that a little bit limiting. Um, so the way we do it uh, with Synology, I don't have one parent folder. I have um, basically separate folders that can all be shared and they don't have to be under that, that, that parent. Um, and that is important because I don't want to be saving all my events from every photo booth into the main synced folder. Um, basically, I want to ensure that uh, the images that are saved from each photo booth don't sync back to every other photo booth. Now, you can do this in Dropbox with selective sync by un unticking, unselecting um, all the other photo booths on each photo booth. Uh, but that's a little bit more work to set up. And also, generally what happens with Dropbox, if you add, say, a new photo booth into the mix, once you set Dropbox up the first time, 
um, you need to quickly jump into Selective Sync to untick all the other photo booths, otherwise it starts downloading all those images from the other booths by default um, to any new computer that you add. So, um, not a big fan of Dropbox um, for photo booth stuff. Uh, in terms of just using it as an office tool, I think it's, it's fantastic. So what we do, we basically have a folder that we call um, TPBG, which is just our company name, um, custom. And in here are all my profile stuff. This folder syncs to every single photo booth. This folder, TPBG photo booth, only is, is local to each photo booth. Um, it syncs back to the server in the office, but it doesn't sync across to each photo booth. Um, it is just local to each um, machine. And in here is where all my event images save. But only for that one photo booth. Um, I also save some localized setting files for Breeze in here as well that don't need to sync across to other photo booths. Um, then we also um, have a print layouts folder and this is where we save all our um, PBLT files. Um, so these are all our print templates for Breeze and this folder um, and, and, and PNG files for um, you know, GIFs and, and, and overlays and, and so forth. This also syncs across to every single photo booth. Uh, then we also have an updates folder and this is where we have like say all our software licenses um, and all our install files so all the Breeze products um, just any little bits and pieces that I want to have handy and this also syncs across to every single photo booth um, but I just split them out into separate folders just to keep it um, a little bit neater. So this is what allows us um, to basically set a foundation to sync um, events or files across to all my photo booths. So the uh, demo that we were looking at, the Corona one, if we go into TPBG custom um, profiles, we have the Corona demo. Okay, so this is the path, TPBG custom profiles, Corona demo. If I jump across to this other photo booth, if it's still open, Yes, it is. I'll just enlarge this one. So now I can see, if I jump onto the desktop to be sure, this is our other booth, Douglas. Um, if I open up a folder here, I can go to the same place on Douglas, my C drive, TPBG custom, profiles, and there's my Corona demo. It's the exact same file path. So in Breeze, what happens is, I'll jump back to the other one so I don't get too confused. Um, if we jump into the settings, Breeze wants to know for each settings file where your folder of images is, where are your screens, your overlay files, your graphics. And this is what breaks things and this is why you need to have consistency. If you're saving things on the desktop and you're trying to, you know, uh, um, share events across multiple photo booths, you have to tell Breeze on every photo booth where your images folder is. But if you keep it under your C drive, Breeze will just know because it's looking at the exact same place on every computer. So it's really important um, to standardize. It'll just make things a lot easier, especially, especially when you're working with profiles, when you've got multiple um, things happening. As I mentioned in the other uh, demo, um, I also strongly recommend sticking to a, um, a, a, a naming convention for your settings files. So we always call our settings files your settings. Every time, doesn't matter what, um, with occasional exceptions, but 99% of the time we call it the same thing. Um, what I see a lot um, is stuff like, you know, that and um, stuff like, you know, um, like that, um, and, and you just end up with people have these folders of assets and about a hundred settings files in there. So I don't do that. So basically, what I do is we have one folder, one folder per event. Um, when we're doing custom, when we're sort of doing custom corporate work that's got um, 
um, uh, custom email templates and things like that. So uh, we have a set up templates and I have my templates broken down by screen size and I have all these templates, so the zip files that contain all the files that I need. So when I'm setting up a new event, I can say, all right, it's just gonna be a simple photo plus share. And I copy that and I come back to my folder here and I can extract that. Um, we'll just extract it here. Okay, and then we just rename that to yeah. okay and when I open that I'll just delete that Mac bit yep to be fair what I would normally do is not extract that the right way my bad so now I've got basically all the files I need um, are in here Okay, so we sort of standardize things that way to make it easy. Um, the, yeah, okay, so the question was just um, to sidetrack quickly. Uh, with Breeze, when you add a um, connected DMP printer, it connects with a new name. Nine times out of 10, it's because you're using a different USB port. Um, you always, always plug your printer into the same USB port every time. Um, so what we did on our photo booths, um, because the PC is a little bit hard to access, we put a female, like an extension USB cord onto the printer. Um, then we labeled that cord and staff just know to plug the printer into um, that, US, that same USB port every time. That usually takes, takes care of it. So now that we've done that, that test event, um, if I just jump across to my other photo booth, if I come to my photo uh, folder here, that test event is now on this booth. And it's exactly the same. So now I can run that on, on any photo booth. Hopefully that makes sense. So. Standard structure, same setup on every single photo booth. We save our files in the same place and have everything sync across the, um, all the booths except for where the images save. All right, so here's another, um, I guess, trick that I wanna, that I wanna show you. <clears throat> so we have two tricks. Which one to start with? Now, I said that we create a new folder of images for every event what we do. Well, that's actually not entirely true. We only create a folder um, of event, uh, um, we only create this folder for custom events. And I, I deem a custom event when we need to have um, maybe a unique start screen or when we're using email template because the email gets saved into the settings file. For our social events, weddings and parties, we use the same interface design. We same, use the same email template. Um, everything about every social event we do is the same, um, except for the print layout template. So what we do, we just have one, one setup for social events. And the only thing we do is change the print template. So the way we have that set up is if we come into my brief shortcuts, I have a shortcut here for my um, social photo booth um, with uh, sharing, and I double click on that. I'll just close that one. So it loads my, our social profile. So what we do, let me quit out. All our staff need to do is come into the print layout, and they go import layout and we have our exported print templates and they find the event that they're working on. So it's say Bianca and Hayden and they select that. It loads in the print template. Let me just save that. And then what we have also done in the preferences, we use the print template name as the way to name our files and our folders. So this, uh, this event is going to save into photo booth events, 
uh, Bianca and Hayden, and it's pulled that from the name of the print template. So previously I showed people to use the event up here. We don't actually use that because that would require um, someone going into every photo booth and manually typing that in. But we're always loading in a print layout. So we pull the name of the event from the layout. Now, if you're not using print template layouts, you definitely should be. It's a, it's a much better way to, to handle it. Um, what I see a lot of people doing is that they basically duplicate their settings file purely so they can load in different um, print layouts, but you don't actually need to do that. So when you load in a different um, uh, print layout, it automatically copies the files to the correct place. Um, it also tells Breeze how many photos to take. So if I just load in this blank template that we have here, and I'll just go yes, so now it's set the print layout up the correct way. And we just save that, and if we come into our settings, it's now set Breeze to take one photo instead of three. Um, and if I come back in and load Taylor's 21st, Um, it will load in that template, correct orientation, put all the photos in place. Um, it's basically saving, um, saving the settings and it's changed it back to taking three, three photos. So because nothing else is changing in, in this particular setup, we're not, there's no custom email, no custom start screen. We just basically can load print layouts and that's how we do it. And it also very conveniently changes the name of where the folders, what folders are created. So this is where I think, um, with the, would you like me to explain the print layout? <laughs> okay. Uh, you don't explain how to use the, uh, sorry, the, you don't understand the print template bit. Okay. I'll try and run through that again. So basically what we do when you set up Breeze normally, I think the way most people do it, uh, I'll just have a look. Okay. Okay. So normally when you set up, you have your folder of assets and you copy in your overlay file. It's a graphic like that. And you just drag it into here. Um, and that's, that's how you'd set up your print layout. And then you'd probably come into here and you'll move, move things around like that yep. uh, until you get them, get it correct. What we do is preset all our print templates. So in the week or two leading up to all our events, basically we have someone in the office set up all our print layouts for the upcoming weekend. So what they would do here, um, they would dive into any booth and to start with, they import a blank template. So we made a, um, a blank layout and we simply did that by coming into the print layout editor and um, deleting the overlay. Okay, so we have something that looks like this. And then we export that layout as a blank template. So I'll just say test blank template okay and that's that's done so now we have this blank template okay so now I come in and I want to set up my events for the weekend and I can import um, one of these blank templates so let's say it's going to be this three photo um, photo strip I can load in this template and I say okay so it loads this in and then I need to bring in my artwork. So I go import overlay, uh, and then I navigate to, um, yes, sorry, with the export part, you give it the name. Um, so I come into here and I say into my print layouts folder, um, events, PNG, photo booth, and I grab the overlay and it imports it like that. Now what I do is export it and I give it the, the way we do it is uh, year, month, date, Steve, party. We export that. And then um, let's say I want to do uh, the next event. So I'm just going to go over the top of that. I'm going to import this overlay file. Yep, I'm going to overwrite that. And I'm going to export that. And we'll call that 2026 um, 
Jim's party. Okay, so now, so now I can come in, and that's how I get the name everywhere. Yep. So now I'm doing my event, and it's going to be Steve's party, and I go up. Oh, there it is, Steve's party. I import it, and I OK that, and we save it. And now, if I check, it's going to be saving to Steve party, and that's because I'm using this token here, print template name. So whatever you name that print template, when you import it, that's what it's going to use. And you can see, if you come up to the event shortcut here, it actually shows you right here, print template. That's the one that's currently selected. Um, so we find that's a really great way to, to set up sort of standard, standard events. Now, we don't do this for events that are more custom because um, we tend to uh, hard code in the, the name when we're doing more custom events. So hopefully that makes a bit more sense. Um, okay. So one thing um, I looked at in the beginner's course is how you change these shortcuts up here. So this is the way that we have customized them. Um, and if I just minimize that for one sec and I come back to um, the, so the Corona demo, Okay, now they're different. We've got these one, two, three buttons up here, uh, which are actually shortcuts to loading particular profiles. So it's loaded my profile one, that'll load my profile two. <clears throat> so how did I create a shortcut that lets me change these settings? And also, how did I load a shortcut that, if you look here, um, pay close attention to the file name prefix and to where these images are saving. And when I come to this one, when I come to this one, sorry, this computer's having a slow attack. When I come to this one, it's different. It's got the event name one we worked on in the previous demo and a totally different um, file path structure. So let's get out of this one and I'll show you how we do it. So <clears throat> in Breeze you're probably relatively familiar with your settings file. So that is basically whenever you um, save something in Breeze Um, when you save here, you're saving your settings to wherever it might be. Uh, Breeze has a, another file for which there is no official name, which I just dub the configuration file or the config file. Um, and this file is basically like a super settings file and it allows you to set a whole bunch of other settings. Um, and this is what we use for absolutely everything. So, um, and here is where you're going to have to get a little bit comfortable using XML um, or a text editor at the very least. So we use a text editor called um, come on, uh, Notepad++, um, but you can absolutely open a um, XML file just with Notepad or whatever comes on yeah, the PC. So this is an XML file open in Notepad. What you want to do is use something like Note++ because when you open it, it just sort of makes the text a bit clearer to read because it sort of highlights the relevant sections. So basically what this file does is it gets, um, it, it loads some Breeze settings, I suppose. So these are not really as much um, settings pertaining to the interface as much as global Breeze settings. So the first thing we'll have a look at is basically all these photo booth shortcuts. In here, I can customize these shortcuts. So the shortcuts I'm talking about are these ones up here. All right, I'm just going to close that down for a sec. So what we have here, um, and these, this is all listed in the in the manual, by the way. This is not, you know, not. Um, um, I'll, I'll post a link actually in the group afterwards. This is not like some secret 
society type thing. This is actually all in the manual, um, but you've probably just glanced over it or never maybe thought about how to actually use it. So in here is where I can adjust the name of all those shortcuts um, and turn them on and off and change the order of the shortcuts. Because in Breeze, if we just open this back up again real quick, you can manually change them here and you can turn options on and off, but you can't change the order of them um, <clears throat> is one thing. So I generally don't like the order that um, Breeze puts things in. So you'll see here that uh, the order technically should be layout admin then event, but I've got layout camera start admin event, um, which is the order that I prefer to have, have things in. So in this XML file here, basically what you can do is um, change the order. So here are all your options, um, and you'll need to dive into the menu to find out, into the help guide to find out what all these shortcuts are. Um, but the main ones are these ones. So uh, we have layout, which is the print layout. So if I change this to uh, print layout, um, you know, you might like, I call it admin, but you might prefer just settings. Um, you know, we could say change start to go time. Um, and we might want to have that display sort of more like first. So that's changing the display order. So it's going to display first. If you want to disable one, you set it to zero. One is on, zero is off. Um, these are loading profiles. So in this particular demo, um, profile one is actually, I think, was Australia. Um, profile two was America. And profile three was Africa. Um, incidentally, I will, um, oops, I will post uh, a link to um, this whole demo project, including this file, um, so you can sort of work backwards um, from some of this stuff. So I've saved that. We'll just quit out of here. <clears throat> and now if we launch this configuration file, okay, it's now changed it to what I've said here. So I've obviously got probably a bit of an issue with the ordering um, here, which I'll need to fix. But now instead of profile one, it's got, um, uh, I've called it Australia, and it's loaded my Australia profile. If I click America, it's now loaded my America profile. Um, settings is now, uh, admin is now settings, and so on. <clears throat> so you can create, uh, and, and the power of this or the benefit of this is that you don't have to do it within the photo booth. So now if I come over to my other photo booth, sitting on the other side of wherever it is, another city, <clears throat> if I open up that same profile here, because it's the file should have synced across by now, I got a Corona demo event. If I run this, So now I have the same settings on this event on a totally different photo booth. So by using the XML file, because it's syncing across to the other photo booths, I'm configuring how Breeze is set up remotely. Alternatively, you would have had to log into that booth to do that. So that's one thing you can do in this configuration file. What else can we do? Well, when my computer behaves, okay. So dive into the menu, uh, into the, 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 the help guide, because all this is explained in detail and all the options that you can use are listed there. Um, if you're using Photoshop droplets, you can put the path to your Photoshop droplet in here. Um, so basically that allows you to have a settings file that will turn a particular droplet on and off without having to actually um, go in and, and manually turn it on in the photo booth. Uh, now that's useful because um, you could create a folder, um, you know, let's just say here, called droplets. Um, I don't know if I have one. Um, uh, I won't bother finding one. Um, but basically you could create a folder called droplets um, and in here you would put something like um, C colon um, Um, droplets 
um, skin.exe. So now when what's going to happen is, um, even though I don't have that droplet actually there, if we close Breeze, we leave our photo bits on all the time. So they're always on um, so I can access them remotely. However, it doesn't really matter for, for this because we're syncing the files across, as soon as the photo booth does come on and is connected to internet, it will um, update and sync the files across. But we keep them turned on so I can remote access them anytime I need. Um, so we'll... Uh, Corona demo, relaunch that one. So now if I come into my image editor... <coughs> It's put in the um, shortcut, uh, the, the path to the um, skin smoothing um, droplet. So people have asked me, how do you, you know, how do you make it easy for people to turn on and off uh, a particular filter uh, droplet um, between events? So you know, if this is uh, a regular event you do, and sometimes they want skin softening and sometimes they don't, what you would do is say, create a copy of this configuration file and call it say no skin and we edit it and in this version we remove that and we'll save that one um, so now if we launch this one <coughs> And we come into the setup image editor. Oops, I had a mistake there. I still got the C in there. Um, I'll fix that up. So if we launch the nice skin one. Yeah, must have saved it. Anyway, you get the idea. Um, so now that that um, it's not there basically anymore. So now we have basically two options. So we can launch a version of this particular event with the skin softening or no skin softening. Um, and again, that will sync through to the other photo booth. So I log into this photo booth here, and now I've got that option. It's synced across as well. Okay. So in addition to that, we can also set whereabouts um, our images are downloaded to um, and where we, um, uh, what we call them. So in this particular demo, this is what we were working on before and I had it preset. So it's using the event name and the survey options. Uh, but if we want, we can just scrap that and we can just put in, for example, print um, template name. So it's now going to save into a folder that uses the print template name. Um, and we'll better add in that. I'm sorry, the computer's just because I'm logged into a booth here, it's a little bit laggy. Um, copy that one. and we'll paste it there and we'll save that uh, so now if I launch this one okay now it's picked that up so now it's loaded this particular event using these file name settings and download settings um, and I think I fixed that um, C up Oh, still didn't fix it up. Um, but if I load this one, it's going to have the other settings. So hopefully you can start to see how you can create these different configurations that allow you to control where and how things get saved and how you sort of start setting um, Breeze, Breeze up. So this is the other version of that configuration um, that's got the previous settings in there.
So let's jump back into here. <clears throat> I'm going to come back to this default one in a sec because that's a real good one, good one as well. Um, but also profiles. So this is where I set up all my profiles. Um, and this is also a big one because a lot of people, I think, struggle when they're using profiles. They set one event up that might have three or four profiles, but then the next event, they're only using one profile. And then they sort of, it sort of mucks everything up and they've got to manually change things in Breeze to get things back to how they were. But you can do it here. So um, in this particular event, we've got, we're using the, um, what profile 1, 2, and 3, 11, 12, and 18. So if we wanted to just set this to use, to not have profiles, I can delete out all these, like this. And we can change the default profile back to 1. So now it's just going to load the Australia um, profile. So we'll save that. And now, oh, that was my no skin one. So if we launch, I'll just. Launch this one, we'll let it start. Okay, so now it's loaded the Australia profile straight off the bat. Um, and if we exit out of that, if we come into our set settings and look at the profiles here, all those other profiles are now gone. Um, Profile 1 is set as Australia, and the default profile is set as Profile 1. So this is in this example, let's say, in how, how that would work in the real world is that the client's like, you know what, we're sick of people selecting the USA um, at this event. We just want people to do Australia. And you're like, yep, no worries. So we'll create two versions of our settings file. We don't have to duplicate the whole event, all the folders. We just create changes. Um, um, uh, config file and now it's just going to load the Australia um, menu as the default <clears throat> and so if we click on this one then we can go back to the full previous setting so if we go into this one that we just loaded now these pro profiles are all back so this means you can start switching between more complicated setups without really messing all your breeze, um, breeze settings up um, so basically, again, just to have a look at that in, in, re in regards to profiles, basically we're telling it here what profiles to load. Uh, we're telling it here where to save the images, what to name the files, and here if we have a droplet we can enable that, um, and what breeze, uh, what shortcuts we want in the back end. Uh, if you jump onto the, the user guide, there are, there's a few other things that you can add into here as well. Uh, how can you generate the config file? There's actually, I'll, I'll give you, I'll post an example of this one so you can just use this as a, as a launching point. It is actually in the, the help system, but the help, the user manual doesn't really refer to it as a configuration file. It just, it's in the section I think called um, saving settings for later use. Um, but what you can, um, it, it's sort of just a way of splitting out a few different things because in, in Breeze, what you can do um, if we come into settings, for example, you can export your profiles to a, f to a file. So if I export these, my computer catches up, let's just say I'll put them on the desktop. All right, we can export that. And we can also export um, our shortcut settings. Uh, let's say shortcuts. So if we come to the desktop, we should see <clears throat> uh, if we edit this in Notepad. All right, so they're just our shortcuts. And if we have a look, here's, so there are our profiles, I beg your pardon, and these are the shortcuts. So what we're really doing is just taking these two things and a few other bits and pieces and putting them into the one file. Because it's XML, it's just sort of, um, you know, Breeze just reads it in. Um, 
you'll notice, and if you're sort of comfortable with XML or understand how it works, each like it, it's just sort of sectioning it, I suppose. Here are your photo booth shortcuts, um, which you'll see in the what I deem the config file um, uh, is is this section here, basically. Yes, and you, that yeah, correct. It's in the saving settings for future reference. But you can also in Breeze um, export. Uh, there's an option here called Save Photo Booth Settings, and this saves everything. This um, is a, basically saves your settings files and all these other bits and pieces into the one one file. <clears throat> so if we edit this file, um, this is all the uh, where the images save the shortcuts, all your profiles. But it's also all your settings files. Um, so your printer settings template. Um, all I'm really doing is just splitting this out. So I'm keeping my settings that are related to print layout, email, number of photos taken, touch screen layout, keeping that in one file as a settings file, and then pulling the other things out that are sort of more related to the setup of Breeze globally into my so-called um, configuration file. So, and then I use this configuration file by using a profile to load a settings file. Um, but I think once you dive into it, this will start making sense. Um, and the other thing I should point out, I know I've made all my files um, double um, executables, but there is uh, another way to do it that doesn't require that. Uh, if I just come back to, uh, scroll down. If I just go to my Corona event, if we just have a breeze window open, you can just drag these for any settings files, any XML files you can drag onto breeze and they'll ask you if you want to load it. Um, so you don't have to make it a double clickable um, shortcut like I do. You can just drag them on, but I, I create them as um, double clickable items to make it easier for my staff. Um, if the paper size is changing, it might be a, a case of, um, again, plugging into a wrong port or not saving this, the print layout back into the, the, the settings file. Um, you can also just as a, if you get weird printer things happening, if you open up the actual a settings file in Notepad, if you go all the way to the, oh, I've already deleted it. Um, hang on, let me find it different example um, so if I did it here you can um, I, I don't have a handy example but in the settings file normally the last four lines are all the, the printer settings if you just delete those four lines out of your settings file it sort of like clears out any weird weird stuff um, where was I going with all this <clears throat> get back to where I was so yeah the configuration file basically um, That's what I was looking for. Okay, so the configuration file basically just allows you to um, set Breeze up uh, in a you know, standardized way that you can then easily just sync out to all your photo booths. And so long as you keep your structure sort of the same on each booth, this works really, really, really well. Um, the last thing I want to show you, um, which is kind of a, a really neat thing, and this is a bit of a hidden feature, is that Breeze has lots and lots of hidden features that you don't know about unless you coax it out of Chris somehow. Um, normally you uh, email him and say, oh, I need to do this or that. And he's like, oh yeah, I have that. I did that years ago. And it's just a hidden feature you have to enable. Um, if you go, if you're so inclined, if you go, um, if you look through the register, Breeze registry settings, you'll see a whole bunch of stuff in there that you can turn on and off that actually isn't documented. 
Um, so in my config file, I had this line here, uh, which says photo booth default screen directory. So when you set this, it basically allows you to pull screen assets from a master folder. So what that means is this. For most of our events that we do, our interface is the same. We use the same countdown um, animation. We use the same thank you screens, processing screens, the same share screens, which looks something like, um, uh, let's have a look at this one, like this. View this as... All right, so we're all roughly familiar with a screen of assets like that. For 90% of our events, we use the same screen assets. So Breeze has this uh, default option where you can basically tell Breeze to pull all the screens from the one folder, no matter how many setting files you have. So what that means is in practice is that when I set up my more custom events, so for example, um, this one here, um, my folder of assets looks like this. All it contains is uh, my filter, my GIF overlay, my overlay file, and my processed um, overlay files, and nothing else. Um, but yet, if I open this event in Breeze, um, let's close some of these down. So, if I, so this is what it looks like. Um, I'll just give it a quick run through. So it's a fairly you know, basic interface, nothing too, too amazing. Um, so if I come into my settings and breeze, uh, the path to where it's, point, where it's looking for my um, screen images is this one. All right, so I'm just gonna copy that and paste it in here, which is gonna be the same. It's here, but logically, shouldn't shouldn't it be broken? Um, it's looking for all my screens here, uh, but yet there's actually no screens in this folder. So how is it that even how's that even working? It's because it's using um, a default folder for the images. So if we look at specifically, if I come back here and I edit the configuration file, and I come in here. And basically, I have my default screen directory set as this. And so what it's doing is looking in the TPBG custom folder, master core folder, and then it's pulling an event string, um, which is event string five, which is the screen resolution of this photo booth. So let's go have a look at where that is. So it's looking in the TPBG custom folder, master core, event string five, which is my screen resolution 1280X, then the core folder, and it's here. So what's happening is, if I just open back to this one, any image that Breeze can't find in the default folder, the original folder, um, uh, which one was it, all over home, any screen it can't find in here, it pulls from in this one. If it can find the screen in here, then it will use the one that is in this um, folder. So what this means is like for all these custom events we set up, so there's about 92 custom events in here at the moment. Um, let's say if I jump into this one, uh, just testing one, let's say Bostic. So I jump into these ones and it's all the same. They're basically empty. Um, it's using, the only screen it's gonna pull from here is this particular one. Otherwise, it's gonna go looking for the other screens from this folder. So we sync this standard folder of images across to every photo booth. And then when we set up our um, more customized events, um, each photo booth just pulls all the screens it needs um, from a central folder. Um, and that just means you're not duplicating hundreds and hundreds of files and it makes it faster to sync across to all your photo booths. Um, and it also means, and this is probably the cool thing, if you decide 
that tomorrow you are sick of this black interface, you could come into here and edit these screens and change them all to pink or blue or white or whatever, and that would sync out to the, um, that phone would sync across your photo booths. And then tomorrow, next time your staff open the same shortcut, the same settings files they were yesterday, it would be a totally different colored interface. So rather than having to update every profile or every, every settings file or folder of assets, you can have one master folder um, that every single photo booth pulls from that you can change to um, do basically a, a global um, sweeping update of everything. So all these little things sort of tie together. But for me, the biggest, the biggest game changer um, for our business was moving everything into our C drive to keep it consistent across all the photo booths, but also this configuration file. And I will post examples in the group that you can download. Um, so uh, you can have a look at it and play with it. But this file basically allows you to, re it's really what allows you to remotely set up um, events with Breeze. Otherwise, typically you sort of be more inclined to have to log into each booth to sort of, sort of set things up um, manually. But if you can get your head around this, it will be an absolute game changer for what you can do with Breeze. Um, co combine it with um, the default um, folder of ass screen assets um, and the print, print layout, print templates. That's the other big thing. So it's moving everything to C drive, it's using the configuration file. It's having a master folder of assets and a print template folder. Once you get those things sort of down pat, then you can do uh, doing the more crazy stuff in Breeze, the really involved multi-level profile stuff becomes super, super easy. People always say to me that Breeze is so hard and my staff don't get it. But, and, and you know, I, I do understand that. I do understand that in the back end that um, Breeze does look a bit intimidating um, but the thing is you can actually set it up in a way that your front end staff never need to see that literally literally all our staff all our operators all they ever see is this it's the desktop um, if I can get back to it so I can wrap it up uh, it's this breeze folder of shortcuts if it's a if it's a stand event they just pick one of our standard social profiles they come in here they go to layout, import layout, they pick their event, okay it, okay it, okay it, and they're set. So it's loaded in and they're ready to go. That's all they need to do for a social event. If the next day they're doing that more complicated multi-level um, Corona demo, they can come into our corporate custom folder and they just click on the Corona demo ignore that it set breeze up the way I wanted go straight into that and they're into a much more complex setup and our staff didn't know anything about that all they know is to double click shortcuts um, and that's how it should be so yes you need to put in the time and effort in the back end to get it right but once you do for your staff it is just dead dead simple um, question um, uh, using a Swiss keyboard on screen what would be the easiest way to configure the position of each letter uh, unfortunately, um, setting up keyboards in DSI Remote Pro is a pain in the butt. Um, so we'll take a quick look at that. There's no real easy way. You just have to slug it out. Um, but if we look at um, keyboard. Incidentally, again, in the iPad version, making keyboards is a hundred times easier because it's now a graphical drag and drop editor. But DSR Remote Pro currently is still um, all done in XML, which just is painful. Um, I'm actually thinking about through uh, Wilk selling a set of XML files for keyboards that are configured for, because I find the Breeze keyboards by default aren't positioned very well, especially on vertical screens. If you're doing like a mirror, they're like way down the bottom. Um, so I, I, I may release a set of XML files that makes it a lot easier to change things. But basically, you need to edit the email keyboard file and you have to basically calculate um, in Photoshop the coordinates of every key and put in the, the, the pixels in here, which is 
very, very time consuming. Um, so, but what we've done, we have basically created templated keyboards. And so whenever we need to design a new keyboard, uh, for example, for this size screen, this is our layout and we never change this layout. We change the design of it. We'll change the colors and the fonts and the style of the button, but we never shift the buttons because it's just too much work to be setting up a custom keyboard every time. Um, so that's one trick is just to standardize it. So that way, if you do, if you do want to do a fancy, you know, custom keyboard for a customer, you don't have to change the XML. You just change the artwork that goes on top of it. Um, but yeah, the, the default positioning of most of the Breeze keyboards um, aren't, I don't think it's always ideal. So yeah, I definitely might look at um, doing something for that one, which will make it a bit easier. Um, did anyone have any other questions in general on this sort of stuff or anything else? Um, just to reiterate, um, I will upload um, some of these files so you can download them and have a play with them um, so you can actually see how it works. I think in Breeze sometimes it's easier to take something existing and sort of work backwards to see how it was put together rather than trying to figure it out from scratch yourself. Everything is in the help manual, but um, sometimes if you're not looking for it, it's hard to, you know, it's hard to see and you don't know what, you know, what it is. Um, but these groups that I've created for these classes are also designed for you guys to come back and ask questions down the track. Um, so, you know, if you do have anything, try and keep it. If you've been in multiple classes, try and keep your questions to the relevant class so we can just keep it on topic. But um, yeah, hopefully this makes, you know, um, has been useful. Um, I think we all, we all have time at the moment to be looking into this stuff since we're all basically housebound. Um, other topics, that's a good question. Um, if anyone has any topics I'd like me to cover off, I'll definitely do it. Um, cause I also have loads of time on my hand. Um, one idea that I had was, um, okay, droplet. Yeah, I could do a definitely in one on droplet would be a good idea. Um, droplets and filters, because you can do some really cool filters and breeds without having to use droplets. So you can make custom filters. I should write that down, but I don't have a pen. Um, uh, I was considering doing a webinar on a complete, um, set up. So, uh, some of you saw the event we did recently for Amazon or the glamours on the drag queen one. And that was, that was a pretty massive setup that uses, um, uh, iPad. Um, it uses, uh, uh, kiosk. It uses breeze webcam, um, and hot folder prints and barcode scanning. Um, that is a, <laughs> I'd like to actually do it. Um, it's a massive class, so I don't know how I'd structure it. Um, that job nearly destroyed me <laughs> emotionally. I was a broken man after we completed that one. It was so hard, um, but the output from it was so seamless and um, really well done. Um, I mean, not just on my behalf, but it was the, my, my, my team, my, the whole team pulled together on this one from design through the running the event. but what we did for Amazon just would not have been possible. No way with any other software except for Breeze. Um, and you know, Breeze is really the software that allows us to charge premium dollars for these sorts of things. Um, because people, it's hard for people to put a price on the simplicity of something that's actually quite complex. Um, and that's, someone asked the question, I think in the previous group, how do you go about charging for some of these more complex interfaces and setups? And the thing is, clients don't usually come to us and say, uh, make us a really complex interface that you could probably only do in Breeze. They come to us with a stupid idea and you're like, that's going to be really hard to do or um, to, do it simple, uh, to, to do it with most other programs would be just a terrible user experience for the people using it. Um, for example, you know, we had a client that came to us and said, we want to give people, um, they're a travel company, um, and they wanted to give their guests a choice of 52 green screen backdrops to choose from, um, each one being a different country that they, that they, so <coughs> that they sold tours to or, or flew to. 
Now you could do that in any program, like you could do, you know, presumably 52 backdrops in Snappick pretty easy, Photo Booth Upload pretty easy, but the user experience would just be absolutely dreadful. Um, you know, you'd be swiping down the bottom to get to option 45 and then you decide you want something that was back the other way. It just doesn't work. Um, with Breeze, you could create a real interactive experience like using the global map um, where you could zoom into particular countries and then zoom again into even finer detail into those countries, which creates a much easier way to select one of the 52 choices, but also creates a more engaging experience for people. And so that's how you sell these things. You don't say, you don't say, um, well, how are you going to, you know, 52 options is going to be hard, but we can do it just with 52 little buttons. You say, we think we could actually design this in a way that would make it much easier for people to use. Um, and we could also make it fun in a way that would sort of help connect you, connect guests to your brand as they're actually using it and inter integrating, uh, inter um, uh, um, using it. So that's, that's how you do it. You don't, um, you sort of sell the experience and say, well, there's got to be a better way that we can piece this together for you. Um, the difference between droplets and filters, a droplet is, an ex is basically a Photoshop action. So a droplet is where Breeze basically takes the image and it passes it to Photoshop. Photoshop runs an action, saves it, sends it back to Breeze. A filter is, um, I can show you what a filter looks like. Um, a filter doesn't need Photoshop. Uh, a filter uses a, um, a LUT file, a lookup, a lookup file, lookup table. I think it's uh, it's called. Um, where is it? Okay, this is a filter. Um, <clears throat> basically, what a filter does is it's a color table. You essentially um, <clears throat> you Breeze gives you this template. You modify this template in Photoshop to tweak the colors, so you can make it black and white, high contrast, low contrast shift your reds to, to be a blue tinge or your reds to have a green tinge and you save it as this lookup file. Then you tell Breeze um, in your settings to use filter one. And then whenever you take a photo, basically what Breeze does, it takes up, it looks up the color in the each, every pixel gets examined in the photo that's taken and it matches it to the equivalent in here, which shifts the color. So, and this all happens in absolute real time, it means your live view um, will have the filter applied to it. Now, you can't do things like skin softening with this. Um, all you can do is change the uh, color of a pixel by way of contrast or saturation or hue. You can't modify a pixel, you can't bend it or smooth it or or distort it. But I think that's a class in itself and, and would be a good one. So I think a filters and droplet class would actually be an excellent idea. Um, Breeze Hub, I actually ended up covering that off in the beginners class. I don't think I was going to and I and I did just because it um, made made sense. But we can we can take a real quick look at that. Um, so Breeze Hub is a utility that was actually designed for um, the iPad app. Um, as a way to download photos from the iPad to a PC, but also handle printing. And at the same time, Chris put in the ability to, uh, for, the, for Hub to handle the emailing of images uh, for the iPad. <clears throat> so let me just open um, Hub, which I keep in here. Hub comes free with uh, Breeze Event Editor, which is part of iPad. So if you jump onto the iPad page on the Breeze website and download the Event Editor, um, you'll, it'll install Hub at the same time. Uh, video plus FFmpeg, yeah, maybe. I need to brush up on my FFmpegging skills. Um, uh, can I show you a picture with that filter? Um, I will post one after this talk. Um, so this is basically Hub. Now, how I use it for DSLR Remote Pro is for sending emails. Uh, by default, when you send an email from DSLR Remote Pro, it only sends either the print layout or the GIF or the MP4, but not both. And the other thing um, is that you have to wait for the email to upload and send before you can progress to the next screen or finish finish the session and breeze. And the problem with that is that if you have very slow internet, 
it could take it could sit there for 30 seconds or 60 seconds before it times out um, or before it sends the email which really slows the process down with breeze hub um, the emails get sent in the background. So this program just runs behind Breeze. You can minimize it, sits down here. Um, when you send an email, um, it will uh, basically in Breeze, it'll look like it's sent straight away. Then uh, Hub will pick it up in the background and um, send it. So I'll give you a quick look at how that works. I'll open up. I'll have to close that one. Uh, let's make sure. Yep, okay. Um, okay, so we I'll just do a boomerang gif. Okay. All right, so I'm going to email this. Um, I'll put my email in. I'm going to show you another trick while I'm here that I remembered. It's a good XML one. Um, uh, Breeze Hub can definitely work with Kiosk. Absolutely. Same way. In fact, it works it perfectly for Kiosk because if you are, um, if Kiosk is picking images up over a net map network drive, which I reckon is the best way to do it, then Breeze Hub only needs to run back on the photo booth PC um, and Breeze Kiosk will save the email XML file, which will go back to the photo booth PC um, and then uh, Hub will pick it up from there. Um, so I typed in my um, email address. What we've, we've set up a hidden email shortcut for our staff. So when staff send a test shot through, they just tap up in the right hand corner and it puts in our office address so they can send a test shot back. Um, so that's the cool thing about these custom keyboards that you can do things like that. So we'll hit send and that's done. At least that's done according to the um, uh, to the guest. So what happens now? We jump back out here. We'll come over to Breeze Hub. Um, we'll just give that a second or two. Actually, I was changing something in here in my demo. Let me just check. I didn't. Um, yeah, sorry. One sec. I in my demo the other day. I changed something. Uh, while we're here, I'll quickly explain. So in Breeze Hub, in the email settings, you need to put in your um, SMTP server details. You also need to tell it where, which folder to scan. So Breeze Hub will scan subfolders. So I just need to point it at my main events folder. Then it will go through and search every event we've ever done um, to um, look for emails. I'll just run another email just in case it doesn't pick the first one up, though it should. I'll email that. I'm using a random profile here, just FYI, so that's how I get different GIF overlays for each session. Um, Cool, good demo. <laughs> I did have that right. CTV sort of events. No, oh, there we go. Okay, hang on. It's just going to catch up on a couple things. Um, I'll come back to this in a sec. So this will send, normally the email send through within a few, probably 10 seconds or so, but I think I haven't used this booth in a while and it's going to error out on some other stuff I was doing on, but we'll just come back to that in a sec. So when you're using Hub for email, a um, couple things that you need to note. Um, in your email settings, you need to be in offline mode. Um, and to be in offline mode, you need to enable the, um, uh, the email log, it has to save the email log, so you need to set that. And you also need to enable to save an XML copy of the email. Then you also get these extra settings and then in here, and this is probably the best, best thing about using Hub, is that when you send emails with Hub, you can attach the print layout, you can attach 
the GIF file or the MP4 version of it. You can also attach the individual images that get sent with the, with the email as well. And you can resize all of those accordingly. And in addition, you can put thumbnails of each of those into the body of the email. So you can design quite a nice looking email that's got preview images in the body of the email and attach high resolution copies to the email as well. Um, so in here you choose what you want set and for the MP4 or if you're doing a burst GIF, you can pull a frame out of that and use that in your email um, body as well. Um, so you need to have those few things set too. Um, okay, so finally sent those two emails and it's just erroring out on some other stuff I was working on. So I'll see if that's come through to my phone. It has. Um, so uh, you can see here so that was the burst gif so it's pulled in the um the body of the email it's pulled a frame from the burst gif and then attached attached is the the gif itself um, now if i do a, a photo session it'll attach all three images plus the the gif and the the well, i don't i don't attach the print layout but you could attach the print layout as well um what other questions should we have? Um, tips on statistics. So you can, um, in Breeze Hub, also gives you the option to um, pull survey data out as well. So if we basically um, go survey data, and then this works for iPad or DSLR. Um, we'll come into here. Um, where's my folder? Um, events, so I'll choose um, uh, Corona Party because that's what we were just working on. Say OK and run that. Uh, yeah, okay, this is a bad example. Let me just, uh, have I done another one? Actually, yeah, I have done. Uh, I'm not going to have it on this booth. Basically, you can extract the survey data that way, but you can also pull stats. So, same sort of process if, um, hopefully find an event that's got a few photos in to pull some reasonable stats. Um, that was a good one. I'll just say from this Christmas party. Okay, so this will pull stats. So number of sessions, photo session, GIF sessions, video sessions. Um, if, uh, show you the busiest times of the day. Um, and also if it's a multi-day event, then it will give you a daily breakdown as well. Um, now, you know, breeze being breeze, it doesn't look very pretty, but you can select all that copy it and paste it into your spreadsheet program, then you can make something that looks a little bit nicer um, with that. Um, so yeah, so you can also use Breeze Hub for pulling stats from events and um, extracting survey data as well, which is a new, newish thing. Um, yep. Yeah. So if, I mean, as a plug for Jürgen, who with his uh, Photo Booth Deluxe has his, um, uh, um, gallery system. His gallery system also has its own Breeze reporting um, engine, and you can and you can create web-based reports that pull all the data from from the booth as well as all the data from web gallery views as well. So it creates probably a more complete picture if you got using his microsite and gallery system, um, and will collate. Um, the data off the booth and the web-based data as well. So if you haven't checked out his stuff, go to uh, photobooth-deluxe.de. It's, um, uh, it's, it's a German website, but there is an English um, translation on it. Um, and it's, it, his German English is mostly pretty good, um, but it's definitely worth checking out. Um, so yeah, I think there's definitely a few questions about design. Um, I think maybe that you know, upcoming classes might be good to look at. Um, some design design stuff, so filters and droplets and um, making GIF overlays and things like that. Um, I have a full-time designer on staff, um, so he does a lot of our design stuff, but I'm pretty handy myself, so um, 
there's a few, definitely a few tips and tricks for designing stuff for breweries. Um, any other questions? Uh, site photo booth dash deluxe dot de. I will type it in here. Photo booth deluxe dot de. Uh, the AI green screen, uh, Jürgen also has a plugin for that, uh, which works with Breeze. Um, so it's the same website. Uh, that works really well. We did a big activation for that for Calvin Klein just recently where we had the photo booth was literally just plonked in the middle of the shopping mall, um, like the busiest backdrop you could ever imagine. Uh, and the AI tool just worked absolutely brilliantly. Um, really good. The only thing is you need a, you need a real... A steady internet connection it doesn't have to be super fast but it needs to be reliable so um, that's definitely worth keeping in mind so I and it's slower um, probably takes about 15 seconds to maybe upload the photo and then download the, the background program so it's not something I would use for a party for example a real high turnover event but for corporate activations where it tends to be a little bit slower um, definitely works really well um, and clients love the fact that you don't need um, a green screen. So, yeah. Uh, any other questions before I sign off? Um, if you do, you can just um, drop them in here. Um, actually, one tip for creating graphics um, is make sure you don't save your screens as CMYK. They need to be RGB. If you save them as CMYK, they don't display properly in Breeze. Um, they scale funny. And when you're making, if you're using videos, like MP4 for screens, you need to ensure that they're coded as an MP, MPEG-4, um, um, MPEG-4 um, file format, not H.264. Um, uh, Peter, I would argue your five to seven seconds, I would say that is sometimes correct, but I would, I would say it's a little bit longer than that. But um, yeah, um, yeah. Anyway, look, I hope that was helpful. Um, I'll definitely think about some more creative classes because I think there's, that's you know a ton that we can do there, which will hopefully be useful. Uh, I will upload this video and send an email out today with a link to a higher res version than the Facebook playback. So thanks a million guys for sticking with me for many hours today. Um, sorry for the slow start with the technical hitch with Facebook this morning. Um, we will see you on the Facebook soon.